Hey everyone, welcome back to the DevOps Lab. Today I am joined by Sarah Young and we're gonna be talking about monitoring AKS using Azure Sentinel. It's very cool stuff, don't miss it. Hey everyone, welcome back to the DevOps Lab. I'm Damian Brady, and today we're gonna to be talking about Azure Sentinel and more specifically, how we can monitor uh, AKS with Azure Sentinel. I'm joined today as well by a uh, friend and colleague, Sarah Young. Sarah, thanks so much for joining me. Oh, well, thanks for having me on the show. Um, so we, uh, I, I stumbled across a blog post of yours where you were talking specifically about using Azure Sentinel to monitor AKS, which is really cool. And I wanna get into the AKS stuff in a sec, but for someone like me who is totally new to Azure Sentinel, uh, what is Azure Sentinel? What does it do? What's it good for? <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good question. So Azure Sentinel is pretty new. It's only been GA for just over a year now, and it is Microsoft's security information event management so, uh, software. So um, we normally abbreviate that to SIEM, S-I-E-M. Um, in some parts of the world, they'll call it a SIM. So essentially what a SIEM does is you feed it different logs from your environment and it correlates those and looks for strange patterns of behavior um, uh, that may be indicative of a security problem because you, you can't do this sort of stuff manually anymore with anyone who's got any kind of even small environment it doesn't even have to be necessarily complex it's too difficult for a person to to do this themselves so that's why uh, businesses need a seam in order to do their security monitoring and help help them see what's going on in their environment gotcha okay and so um it's not just correlating the logs right the idea is to notify you when stuff is unusual or um if it meets thresholds that you said and things like that is that correct yeah, so um, it does, it, yeah, the idea is that it will correlate and if, um when it looks at those, uh, those the logic and the the thresholds that you've set, it will it can send you an alert and create an incident uh, depending on what you specify. Um, in the olden days, we used to sort of do hard limits, but nowadays we can be a bit smarter than that and use machine learning to say, okay, look back at the last 30 days, look at what's normal um, in terms of behavior. So that might be a sign in, it might be, um, Specifically for Kubernetes, it might be like scaling things up or uh, talking um, um, or creating pods and nodes and things. Um, and if it looks unusual, if it meet, if it's bigger than a certain threshold, then send an alert because that might be indicative that something amiss is going on in your environment. So um, it could be, because when we talk about security, people often think about hackers, but in fact, it doesn't have to be hackers. It can be, security also covers just looking at people who can make mistakes as well uh, because yeah. people can delete things um, or mess things up even when they're not intending to and that's just as bad from a security perspective and that that added intelligence would mean you don't have to kind of preempt all the things that can go wrong right you, you just have this thing watching to say this is unusual or this is not normal behavior you should take mm -hmm. a look yeah, pretty much. That's the idea. Um, so, uh, Sentinel comes with a load of out-of-the-box rules that have been written by Microsoft and our security researchers. We have thousands of them. Um, but it does allow you to write your own rules as well because um, although we want people to uh, use the out-of-the-box stuff as much as possible, the reality is that each business is different and you know they may, they probably need some of their own rules as well. But we're certainly trying to minimize the amount of work you have to do ideally. Right. Well, we'll talk about um, AKS specifically in a second, but I'd, I'd love to see what it actually looks like. Um, you have a, a demo or is something that you can show? Um, I do. Let you know, me, um, yeah, let me show you. I will uh, show you my demo environment. So um, this is uh, one of our big demo environments. You can see it's very busy. Um, this is a dashboard just showing you the last 24 hours. You can see um, in this demo I have here, we, we've had 9.7 million events in the past 24 hours. So that's a lot of logs, but this isn't unusual for, it sounds like a lot, I know, but it's actually not unusual for a big complex environment because the idea is we should be collecting logs from your firewalls, from your servers, from your endpoints, from your Kubernetes clusters, from your containers, 
customers. Um, you'll be collecting things from whatever your identity provider is. Because uh, we have a saying, and I have a really cool sticker with it, uh, with it on, that um, that's out of scope, said no attacker ever. Because the fact yeah. is, is that attackers, in order to uh, get effective security monitoring, you need to be collecting logs from everywhere in your environment because an attacker isn't gonna just go for your endpoints. They're not just gonna go for your identity store. You know, They're gonna travel through your environment looking for whatever is of value. So that's why it's important that you do um, have visibility by collecting logs from you know pretty much everything you can in your environment having said that then I, I also have another sticker i should have got these out um this says collection is not detection because I some the, that one, yeah yeah um, collection is not detection because at the same time whilst it's important to collect lots of events from all over your environment you can over collect and there are i've seen lots of businesses and it was traditionally what you did you collected all your logs but if you're not doing anything meaningful with them and running rules against them to see if anything happens then there's not a lot of value in collecting them so there's a balance to be struck there and it's a tricky thing to do for sure yeah, definitely. I've definitely been in those organizations where, you know, we need to find out if something's going wrong. Let's just dump everything we can to logs and nobody's ever going to be able to find stuff. So, so tools like this make that a little bit easier. Um, yeah, and that's the idea. With support for, yeah, with support for AKS, that means that more and more of your stuff can be collected so that you can um, detect yeah. things that are going wrong. Yeah, so let me show you. So in AKS, we've got a couple of ways that we can support AKS. So if I just show you one of them, if I can find it now. So the first thing we'd recommend people do if you're using AKS is to come here to diagnostic settings. Um, and what you can do here um, is you can select which type of uh, administrative type logs you might want to send to Sentinel or into, into a log analytics workspace. So I'm not gonna read them all out. You can see there's um, a number that you can send here. Um, and you can see I've already set it up here, but essentially all you do is click add diagnostic setting. You can call it whatever you want and you can send, you can pick which logs you want to send or you can do everything. Um, so um, with the diagnostics, um, and we have this across Azure by the way, um, but of course AKS, you can send to log analytics and Sentinel sits on top of log analytics. I should have said right. that just for clarity. So that's how you send to Sentinel, but also you can just put these in a storage account or or um, if you were using a third party theme or a third party system, you could stream it to an event hub and that's the way you can stream it out of Azure. So um, in terms of good security monitoring practices and good monitoring practices, you should be doing something like this with your AKS. Right, the gotcha. other thing, sorry, go on. <laughs> no, 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 that's, that's super useful. Yeah, the other thing we've got is, so that's um, getting some of the raw logs into Sentinel, so you should definitely do that. The other thing is looking at using Security Center. So Security Center is our infrastructure security hygiene tool. It has lots of different recommendations um, around security hygiene. The idea being that with AKS, uh, with AKS and anything else, and I will just put in, it helps if I know how to spell Kubernetes. <laughs> Um, so you can see here, um, uh, Security Center gives you recommendations for your security hygiene. Um, so when we say security hygiene, what we mean is, um, you know, just patching, making sure um, you don't have um, default username and passwords. This sounds really basic, but there's so much research that shows that people get this wrong all the time. Um, and um, you know, so many, so many breaches would not happen if people did their security hygiene well. So Security Center helps with that, but specifically for AKS, you can see here, um, it will give you uh, recommendations as to how you can actually improve the general security hygiene of your Kubernetes cluster. So using role-based access control, uh, restrict IP ranges, um, if I, um, and then we've got, I won't read them all out, um, but then we have Azure Defender. So Azure Defender is our um, infrastructure security threat alerts, um, and it now includes AKS. So um, you can see here, for example, um, we have a exposed Kubernetes dashboard detected. And of course, anyone who's been around Kubernetes for a while knows that the good old <laughs> exposed dashboard is a really good vector for security attacks. Um, but what we, um, and this is just an example of an alert we get, um, there's quite a lot more. But then the idea is with this, of course, 
hopefully people watching this, you know why it's bad, but essentially this is the admin dashboard. If this is exposed to the internet, much it makes it much easier for someone to potentially breach your system. Um, and then this alert, you would feed into a seam solution. So, um, wow. Ideally Sentinel, uh, but it can be other ones as uh, Of course, there are third party ones as well. Um, mm -hmm. And then, because this is uh, what um, what Security Center does is look for um, look for things that actually look like a threat. And so, you know, um, some of the other things, uh, hygiene and configuration things, are they might be a problem, but not necessarily, but it's good practice to fix them. Whereas if you see an alert like this, it's like, actually, this is bad. You need to do the something about it. Yeah, yeah. as you can see, we've got high severity there. And I would agree, like having an exposed dashboard is not a good way to go. Um, no, definitely not. no, it's really not. So, oh, we've got a few of those actually. Um, Oh, that's this is oh, a demo environment though, right? This is a demo <laughs> environment. So yeah, but yeah, I should point out this is a demo environment and it is purposely kind of full of bad things. As you can see, as I scroll down, um, so you've got another one here and exposed Kubernetes service detected. So um, right. yeah, we've um, so there's two different ways you can do it. Um, and as you can see, actually, there's a number of different services here. Um, and again, this should be fed into your security alert monitoring as well. Um, so you've got... Yep. Um, lots of different visibility of what's going on. And then your security operations team, if they need to, they can take um, some action. It, we actually do give a little bit of action. Uh, we do give a little bit of instruction here as well. Um, if Because of course, security operations folks can be looking at a whole wealth of different things and they won't be experts on everything. So hmm. it may be that um, they don't know specifically what to do. And you can see it also gives you, uh, to prevent future attacks, it will also give you some security um, some related, again, hygiene recommendations that are related to this. So running containers as root, et cetera. So we're really building out, um, although we were talking about security monitoring, um, of course, security monitoring is really important because you will never get away from attacks. Being Security monitoring is kind of the reactive side of security, but then the, right. the proactive side about getting your security hygiene in order as well. So we've got a heap of stuff that you can uh, you can use to do that with. So yeah, there's a ton of stuff uh, that that is available in Azure with um, security, which I've only just kind of started to get my head around. Um, the key thing here, though, is where do we go to find more? So if we want to learn about this stuff, what's what's the next steps? Oh, so there's a ton of material um, that's freely accessible online. Um, I would, um, and I will make sure. I um, everyone has the links, but um, in particular, we have the Microsoft security documentation website. Um, the Microsoft tech community is really good. Have a look at the security section there. Um, it breaks it down by security products. Uh, we've also got um, within there, the Azure security top 10 best practices and the security mm -hmm. reference architecture, because we do have a lot of security products and it can be confusing to understand how they all fit into the ecosystem. Uh, but there is a ton of material out there that you can look at. So uh, we'll make sure um, uh, that um, you have all the links. But if you just put in Microsoft security documentation and tech community and security, that's a good place to start. So we'll put in as many show notes as we possibly can. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can fill yeah. a lot of show notes for you. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. Th look, thank you so much for joining me. Um, we're not too far away in the world. I think you're in New Zealand at the moment, Wellington. I am. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm over in Brisbane in Australia. Um, yeah, so we are closer than a lot of people are at the moment. But um, it, was, it was wonderful to talk to you and thanks so much for, for all that information. Um, and for everybody watching, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you on the next DevOps Lab. Mm -hmm.